Let's take a look at an intersection of an elliptic hyperboloid and a hyperboloid of one sheet. And I have surfaces preset here in Mathematica. Elliptic paraboloid in blue, the hyperboloid of one sheet in gold. And you can see the intersection curve, some kind of oval type thing, maybe the border of something shaped like a potato chip. And I created this elliptic paraboloid, this hyperboloid of one sheet with the Mathematica commands down here. It's pretty basic, plot 3D for the elliptic paraboloid where I give the function z equals x squared plus y squared. Just I bring the function x squared plus y squared, the limits that I want to plot over the x and y I want to give the computer. The plot range is the box I want to put the image in. Box ratios are four by four by six because the x width is four, the y width is four, and the c width is six. This makes the units one to one to one. It makes common units on all axes. I made a blue slightly opaque with no mesh. So altogether, the command looks complicated, but one piece at a time, you understand what it's doing. A hyperboloid of one sheet, I use contour plot 3D, which I give a mathematical equation, and that includes a double equal sign for the equation right here, x squared minus y squared plus z squared equals equals one. That tells Mathematica that this is a mathematical equation. I want to examine points inside this box to see if it fits that equation. I'm going to use the same plot range as above, so they fit together, the same box ratios. This is gold and less opaque. So let's switch over to Notepad right here and look at these two equations and see what this expression looks like. So if I call these equation one, excuse me, equation one and equation two, I mean, my goal is to basically to graph this, to look at these just two variables at a time, like from the left, from above, from the right, front, back. So I can look at these two variables at a time by manipulating these two equations. If I add the two equations, Directly, I get 2x squared plus z squared equals z plus 1. If I subtract equation 2 from equation 1, I get 2y squared minus z squared equals z minus 1. And if I substitute equation 1 into equation 2, I get x squared minus y squared plus the quantity x squared plus y squared squared equals 1. And see, each time it eliminated one of the variables. And the first eliminated y, second eliminated x, third eliminated z. So are these equations helpful to me? Well, I recognize the first two equations as possibly, you know, ellipse, possibly hyperbola. Third equation deals with a fourth power that may be harder to unwind, but let's examine this ellipse and hyperbola right here. So I have 2x squared plus, I'm going to complete the square, z squared minus 1 half z plus 1 quarter. What I did right there is subtracted z from both sides. Now let me... I apologize. Let me just show you the steps because the one half is out of place. I'm not going to rush. 2z squared, 2x squared. Plus c squared minus c. It leaves a one on the left hand side, on the right hand side. 2x squared plus c squared minus c plus a quarter equals one plus one quarter. I'm completing the square. 
So I'm going to have 2x squared plus z minus 1 half squared equals 5 quarters. <coughs> Excuse me. So I did a subtracted the z to the left-hand side, then took the number in front of the z to minus 1 half of that is minus 1 half squared is one quarter, added one quarter to both sides to keep it even. And now when I divide by five fourths and do my basic algebra here, this is x squared over five eighths plus z minus one half squared over five quarters equals one. So you recognize the five halves, or the five eighths is a squared parameter that boxes the ellipse. The five quarters is b squared. So plus minus a parameters, excuse me. Plus minus a right here. Is square root 5 eighths plus minus and plus minus b b is plus minus 5 fourths i know that both of those roots can be simplified but i'm going to keep this uniform presentation first so that gives me x if i think in an ellipse is a square root of 5 eighths cosine t and y Square root of five fourths sine t. Let's do the same thing to recognize this hyperbola right here. Two y squared minus z squared minus z is minus one. Let's factor out the minus one of the z terms. This will give me 2y squared, completing the square, z squared, half of 1, it's 1 half, and squared is 1 quarter. So this is a perfect square now. I added 1 quarter to the left side. No, I subtracted 1 quarter from the left side. So I need to subtract 1 quarter from the right side. So now I have 2y squared minus z plus 1 half squared equals minus five fourths. Now be careful with my simplifying right here. I have go to ellipse form, divide by minus five fourths. Yes, then I could say positive z plus one half squared by force and one on the right divide by minus five fourths here and I get minus y squared over five eighths. But it's also useful to look at this in terms of solving for y. So if I solve this for y here, I have y squared is equal to, I'm gonna to have to divide the two away, but I'm gonna bring this piece over here first. One half z plus one half squared minus five eighths. Y is plus or minus square root of one half z plus one half squared minus five eighths. I'm not going to fill in the z plus one half for a second right here. Because where am I going to get the value of z? Let's go back to the left hand side to be a little more clever. Notice I wrote x and y for my parameterization of the ellipse. I'm so used to writing things in terms of x and y, but it was actually x and z, right? Let's correct that. 
And this value of z, I can insert in this equation and write y equals plus or minus square root. Some good things happen right here. So I have z plus 1 half. And over here, I'm going to make another correction, right? The parameterization will be naturally x and z. But I have z minus 1 half as the z center of my circle at 1 half. So when I do the parameterization, I actually have to, second correction, turn this into z minus 1 half. Or z equals square root of 5 fourths sine t plus 1 half. This z is what I'm going to take over to this expression. So I have z is something plus 1 half, and then I got to add 1 half to again to z. So what I get right here is 5 fourths sine t. We don't have room for that 1 half. So let me do some editing magic right here. Slide that over. Well, it didn't slide over the way I wanted to. See what I mean by learning how to reproduce some of this stuff. I'm just going to rewrite that. Square root of one half. z plus 1 half squared minus 5 eighths. And the z plus 1 half will be square root of 5 fourths sine t plus 1. Now if you look at this now, I have three expressions that I can use to parameterize my circle or my circular intersection place. I have an expression for x in terms of t. I have an expression for y in terms of t. Notice it's in two pieces. I have an expression for z in terms of t. Now they're very messy. And I could do some simplifying here, but I'm not sure the simplifying is worth my time. But now I have a curve that I can take over to Mathematica. An x of t, y of t, d of t. And I'm going to have to input it almost as two curves, kind of a left-hand side of the edge of the potato chip and a right-hand side of the edge of the potato chip. But these are the expressions I'm going to bring over. It's going to take a lot of typing with the roots and the roots in the roots and the squares. But let's do it slowly and carefully. Let's go back to our Mathematica screen. Go back and share just this window right here. And start to type in the curve that I want to demonstrate. I'm going to use parametric plot 3D. I'm going to use auto completion when I can. Delimit with square brackets. And I'm going to make a list, which is the x of t, y of t, z of t. So the first element in my list is going to be square root, capital S square root bracket. 5 over 8, and then cosine t, capital C cosine t. That's the x coordinate. I'll just type in one of the y coordinates because that's going to be a mess as it is, and then I can copy and paste the rest. It's going to be square root, bracket, and then 1 half, another square root, or a square, 
right? So parentheses, square root, five fourths, capital S sine T, square brackets on sine plus one. This was the quantity inside the square root that I'm gonna have to be squaring. I lose track of all these parentheses. We're going to do our best, and we're going to have to error check as we go along. So I think I've typed in that correctly. Maybe you've written it along with this on your paper. It's inside a giant square root. We're going to give it a test in a second. Third coordinate for z was the square root of 5 eighths. Sorry, 5 fourths sine t plus one half. Now you see where some well-placed carriage returns might help you look at this a little more closely. So let's run this for a time interval. Let's run this for t equals zero to two pi. Not sure about the two pi yet, but let's see what happens. I want the two pi to make a full circle, full ellipse in the situation. And I do get something that looks like half of what I'm looking for. Out of scale, of course. Let's put in the second piece. How do I put a plus or minus here? Well, essentially I'm gonna graph two of these. So I'm gonna make a list of lists. And here's the first half of my graph. Copy, paste, comma. There's the second half of my graph. So first half of the edge of the potato chip, second half of the edge of the potato chip. I'll put a minus sign on this half. I don't have to have such an expanded view, but I'm trying to help you see it. And then when I graph, I get an error. <laughs> okay, let's find out what's wrong. I put this extra parentheses outside of where it belonged. So I'm gonna have to delete that there and put it, this extra brace right there. I think that's better. Okay. Well, I'm getting two things here. It's kind of not what I expect. I certainly get the potato chip edge in blue and green because Mathematica by default wants to color it differently. I'm also getting another expression right here, looks like a gold line, but let's think about that for a second in our plot. I have my x, y, and z. I have t equals zero to two pi twice. That's what happened. Let's take that out. Let's collapse these. Yeah, now I have my possible potential edge. Now I'm gonna do one thing here before I continue. Let us make a plot style thick and red. Sorry, have the cap flux on. The plot style being red and thickness. Standard thickness for a line is 0 0.02. You can experiment with that. Close the brace, comma. So now I have a parametric plot representing that curve. It's actually two pieces that I place this curve in. I understand that while you're looking at this video, you could pause, read, the expressions into them into your own mathematical window. Let's see if this looks better. Oops, here comes another error. So what's the error here? Sometimes you can read this plot style is not of the form x, y min, y max. Okay, what happened is 
I put the plot style argument ahead of the parameter T description. Let's take that out. Let's hope that I took that out properly. And let's put the parameter description first, plot style second, take care of parabola, or take care of comma, excuse me. Okay, now I'm doing better. I got one thick and one red. <laughs> so let's, oh, I don't want to try to convert or understand the machine. Yeah, I got to get used to giving these arguments. But basically, I gave two curves, so I need to make both thick and red. I'm sure there's a more elegant way to do this. But now I got what I want. Excellent. Now we're going to see if I import this into my drawing, if it lands exactly where I expect it to land. Because by scale, this looks different, right? What I'm going to do is suppress that output and come back up here to the top where I put the show command. Add the curve that I just created. And woof. Oh my, I'm in the right ballpark, but I have something wrong with my scaling. So this is something that you're always going to have to wrestle with. Let's see what happens. I go back here and examine exactly what my scaling should be. So I got the sine five force. I'm looking down here at the Z coordinate. I'm going to confirm each coordinate plus one half. Square root of five fourths, sine t plus one half, fine. Then I have square root of five eighths, cosine t. That matched my calculations. Now here, what's about the square root right here? Let's look at the square root carefully. Let's expand it so I can look at the pieces inside. I took one half. And then the square root, and then I squared this, and I ended with a one half, and that's inside the square root. My first impression is it looks good. Then I look closely, I did not end the square root right here on the five fourths. So I'm curious why it didn't report an error to me. So now that I end the square root of the five fourths, it says, well, you've got your parentheses incorrect. It's trying to warn me about this parentheses here. How am I going to match that? What I'm missing is, am I missing square root on here? No, that ends right there. This is always hard to puzzle out. This brace doesn't belong there. I had that brace out of place, so I was taking the square root of sine of one plus. Okay, now let's try it. I'll expand further so you can see it. And then I'll retract. So I have one half times the quantity, square root of five fourths, sine t plus one, squared, so those parentheses belong together. Then I'm going to subtract 5 eighths. Then I'm going to take one half of that object. And then I'm going to take the square root of that object with a plus and minus. So this looks good. Let's roll it back up. And instead of making a new video where I made no mistakes, that's better to show people that mistakes happen. So I'm going to take this term, copy it, place it here. And now let's try. I'm going to reevaluate curve. I'm going to come up here. And success. And so it's a struggle to make these things work, but. When you make it work, it's always very satisfying. Take your time, work through this video, and practice entering these things extremely carefully, especially complicated expressions. But you can illustrate things 
with mathematics that were very, very detailed and beautiful.